Spectrum TV. Broadening your horizon. Business exists only to meet the needs of the people. But there's an extra advantage if your product and services are pitched on a platform that gives you the added advantage over your competitors. For your desired return on investment and so much more, advertise on Spectrum Television, on Star Times DTH Channel 421 and on Free to Air with a frequency of 12733. Spectrum Television, broadening your horizon. One truth not often told is about the transformation that Africa has undergone in recent decades. Africa is shaping its own destiny and should be referred to as the African opportunity. On Spotlight Africa, we paint the African picture the African way laced with truth, detail and the color of the African continent. Join Uyai Anyekan every Tuesday and Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Spotlight Africa, telling the African story. One. Every society is premised on the quality of relationships forged by its inhabitants. The health of these relationships determines how well people, relationships, organizations thrive and how long they stick together. Join Uyai Anyekan on Connect every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. and on Sunday 2.30 to 3 p.m. on Channel 421 on Star Times to catch all the conversations, interviews, real stories and how to navigate relationships and family life in the 21st century. Real people, real faces, real stories. Connect live on Spectrum Television. All right, it's a beautiful, beautiful day to be alive and well. Welcome to today's edition of the show. We are glad you could join us today. This is Political Spectrum coming to you live from Uyo, the state's capital, and I remain your host, Onuese Ehinoma Olushegu. As always, today promises to be exciting yet again and, in, and engaging, as usual, our conversations continue on everyday political and economic developments in Nigeria conversations on policy and policy actions of government with the immediate reactions by citizens, big businesses, institutions, and civil society making government more accountable to its people. First, on President Tinumbu's administration's calendar, today is 17th Tuesday, 2023, and it marks exactly 142 days of President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu in office as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and this is now exactly four months and 22 days as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. All right, it's no longer news that Tinubu swore in three additional ministers and presided over the uh, second Federal Executive Committee meeting yesterday. President Bola Tinubu has presided over a second Federal Executive Committee uh, meeting and sworn in three newly appointed ministers, a brief Swearing-in ceremony took place at the Council Chamber Presidential Villa Abuja before the uh, commencement of uh, the FC FEC meeting, which is the second in Tinumbu's administration. The, minister, the ministers who were screened on the fort were sworn in by President Tinumbu. They include Jamila Ibrahim from Kwara State, Balarabe Lawal from Kaduna, Ayodele Olawande from Ondo State, who have now joined 45 other ministers who were approved by the Red Chamber in August. 
Now, the ministers were assigned the following portfolios. Jamila Bayo Ibrahim, Minister of Youths. Ayodele Olawande, Minister of State, Youths. And Balarabe Lawa, Minister of Environment. Let's take a look at the video briefly before we move on. expectation is high and there's tough time right now we must work hard and create a buoyant economy that will serve every Nigerian every Nigerian we have from unemployment that is a level that is not acceptable we are threatened by climate change, changes. You see, I found employment, underemployment. But to thought things around, you have been selected to perform your utmost best. The policy agenda will be set to reform economy to deliver sustainable and inclusive growth, strengthen national security for peace and prosperity. Without security, there can be no investment. We must unlock the energy and natural resources of this country. We must start to pro produce for ourselves, dig ourselves out of the hole, focus on education, health care, make social investment that is essential for the development of our people. Our priority areas are defined in, in our economic programs. Every area is a priority, and you belong in the driver's position to realize and make that priority a fulfilling promise. All right, that's the pre president making very clear and un uh, unambiguous statements. But two takeaways from that Federal Executive Committee meeting. Henceforth, it will no longer be a staggered meeting unlike the last one we had almost 40-something days ago. And then, uh, secondly, there is a proposal for uh, a fiscal year budget for next year of 26 point something trillion. Now we take a look, we, we, if we look at all this analysis, uh, 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 Pari Pasu, with uh, the purchasing power parity of the Naira, what actually is the worth of $26 trillion? All those, all those breakdowns will be done in subsequent uh, editions. So we move to our next development being uh, still the same story on the EFCC uh, chairman that has just been appointed and uh, uh, lots of conversations around it. So look at the appointment. EFCC ICPC chairman must not come from the same Nigerian region. And that is credited to uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, telling the presidency directly. Now, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, has said that the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and their counterparts in the Independent Corrupt uh, Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, cannot come from the same region in Nigeria. And according to him, this is according to the provision of the Federal Character uh, Commission Act and by virtue of the provisions of Section 14 of the Constitution, Falano had said. Now he continues on Monday during an interview on the television program while answering questions on the controversies that have surrounded President Bola Tinubu's appointment of Ola Olukoyede as a new EFCC chairperson. 
Now, Falana said uh, that while Oluko Edo, who has served as the chief of staff to the former EFCC chairman and as the secretary of the commission, is eminently qualified to head the anti graft commission as he has acquired enough cognate experience to head the agency. Now, the government should look into the objection uh, people have raised based on uh, the provisions of the Federal Character Commission Act. Falana said there is no issue with the appointment of Oluko Yede except that federal government must consider adherence to the provisions of the Federal Character Commission Act. Now he says, and I quote, quote, the only issue that has been raised which for me has to be considered by the government is that we have in this country the Federal Character Commission Act and also by virtue of Section 14 of the Constitution, appointments should reflect federal character. Quote continues, we have the EFCC and the ICPC, the heads do not come from same zone. I, I think he meant same, probably same geopolitical zone. If there are two positions in this country in the public service, one must go to the north and one must go to the south. If there are four, two must go to the north and two must go to the south. Now, if there are six, one must go to each geopolitical zone that is the law in Nigeria today, end of quote. He continues, and I quote, I'm not comfortable with the fact that as today, the heads of the AFCC and the IPC, ICPC are from the same zone. Apart from that, Mr. Oluko Yede is eminently qualified to head the EFCC. My colleagues who have criticized the appointment have not looked at the rele relevant provisions of the EFCC, which in Section 2 provides that the chairman must be at least an assistant commissioner of police or its equivalent in the security service or in law enforcement agency, end of quote. He said that when the former EFCC chairman, Abdul Rashid Bawa, was appointed, people also challenged the appointment and said the position was for police officers. But we said no. Now, if you have served in a law enforcement agency and you have acquired enough experience, you're qualified to head the EFCC. According to Fallon, Mr. Oluko Yede had been the chief of staff to the chairman of the EFCC and has also been a secretary of the commission and a board member by virtue of his position as, as the secretary of the commission. Fallon said uh, that while people are saying that Oluko Yede has not acquired the necessary cognate experience for the position, the law does not say the cognate experience must be in that agency. Now, he said, and I quote, so if you have a gentleman who is said to be a, regu a regulatory compliance consultant who has also worked in the detection of crimes or fraud, accomplished expert in those areas, you cannot say he hasn't acquired the cognate experience because cognate experience actually means your acquisition of the skill in the area we are talking about. And it does not mean it must be in the FCC. He continues, and I quote, quote, for instance, I know a lawyer, Rotimi Jacobs, SAN, who has been prosecuting for the FCC since 2004 when the body took off. There is no way you can say that such a lawyer who has prosecuted the majority of the cases investigated by the FCC has not acquired cognate experience. So, if you have a lawyer of 22 years who has spent the better part of his practice detection, uh, detecting crime, uh, detecting fraud-related crimes, who has acquired the knowledge both home and abroad, who has worked with international anti-fraud agencies like the FBI, the fraud office in the UK and more, it is difficult uh, to question his competence. Now, Falana reaffirmed that the only area the government will have to go back to the drawing uh, table is also to ensure that the anti-graft agencies in the country are not headed by people only from one region. Now, we've had these arguments back and forth. We've had legal pundits come to bring in the technicalities of the law as to what cognate experience may mean. So while some are saying 15, uh, uh, 15 years experience is not ambiguous, it is a specific statement that you must have been seen to serve uh, in a law enforcement or uh, 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 any other relevant place, which is an addition to the cognate experience. Some people are also arguing that you must have served in the EFCC for 15 years. So until this <laughs> is basically tested in court, what we are going to be having are uh, 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 perceptions and analysis from different perspectives. But that makes it interesting because on this show, uh, the argument back and forth for and against is what makes for a robust conversation so that all sides will be involved. All right, let's quickly take another development before we go into the main issue of the day. A coup on democracy. That statement is credited to Senator Abu 
that reacts to the appeal court judgment sacking him. And the interesting part, he fingers Akpabio. Now, after the court of appeal, Abuja has sacked the senator representing Adamawa North, uh, Senator Elisha Abu, which delivered judgment on Monday. The three-member panel presided over by Justice C. Wosu Iheme ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to issue a certificate of return to Amos Yohana as the duly elected lawmaker representing the area in the National Assembly. Now, the appellate vacated the tribunal judgment, which had earlier affirmed Abu of all uh, progressive Congress as the winner of the senatorial election. Now, INEC had declared Abu the winner of the February 25, 2023 parliamentary election, but aggrieved by the electoral body's decision, the People's Democratic Party, Johanna, went to the tribunal to challenge the outcome of the election. Now, here it is. Now, Senator Elisha Abu has alleged that five senators have been penciled for removal over their non-support of uh, Goodwill Akbarbu uh, Senate presidency bid. That is coming from uh, Mr. Abu himself. Now, he said this at his residence in Abuja on Monday, hours after the Court of Appeal nullified his election into the Senate. Now, during the press conference, Abu, who represented Adamawa North, listed Oji Uzo Kalu as one of the five senators said to be uh, butted out of the Red Chamber for not supporting Akbarbu's bid. Now, while describing the judgment sacking him as a coup on democracy, he called on his supporters to, despite uh, that, despite the ruling, Senator Akpabio maintained uh, Abu maintained that despite the court uh, declaration, uh, the PDP Amos Johanna as the winner of the federal election, he won the election. According to him, he defended the PDP candidate with a, ma ma a margin. He defeated uh, the candidate with a margin of eleven thousand votes. Now, now let's hear him uh, speak. I tell you that I'm a hero of democracy. I'm a martyr of democracy. I am been actually bewitched by government because of my critical stand on national issues. That is the truth. It is obvious. I heard it from a library source, which I will not call the name now, that five senators will be removed from the Senate. Those who did not stand with my brother, and my elder brother, my good colleague, distinguished Senate President Akpabio. Those who did not vote for him, five of us are going. I am number one. What Jews of Kalu will go? They have, they have a pencil, five of us, and take it. They told me that I'm going, what Jews of Kalu is going, and few others are going because we do not support the emergence of my brother and my colleague, Senator Akpabio, from the, imagine the President of the Senate. This is not democracy. The court, we have hope in the court. The court should be careful. Let us build the country. International community are watching us. You cannot withdraw a ground and the court of appeal restore a ground without the lawyers asking for that ground to be restored. The court will, 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 will restore it and then void it somebody's election, people's mandate, on a ground that was. I want to tell you that I'm a hero. Of All right, that's Abo uh, expressing himself and telling his colleagues to be mindful that any time from now, other issues will arise. He mentioned some names, uh, and according to him, uh, uh, the current Senate president is supporting uh, the judiciary to target some of the people who did not vote him as Senate President, but hey, that is according to Senator Abo that has just been removed by the appeal court. As the development continues, we are sure uh, to give you accurate and comprehensive feedback. Now to the major issue of the day, uh, the development reports uh, from media has it that some few hours ago, m maybe yesterday, uh, Chief Ateket uh, 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 Tom, Asari Boilov, others, meet in rivers over oil theft issues. Now, the Niger Delta ex-warlord or so they have been described, including His Royal Majesty Dr. Ateke Michael Tom, the Amanayabo of Okochiri Kingdom and the Sekuru of Niger Delta, Asari Dokubo, Ajube Bipoboro, General Shootaside, 
and Victor Ben Ebikaboe, General Boyloof, have met on how to resolve the issues of oil theft. Now, this is coming as the Jaw Youth Network commended President Bola Tinumbu for renewing the pipeline protection contract awarded to Tantita Security Services Limited, which we all know who it belongs to, uh, for another three years. Now, Oil Assets Surveillance Contracts Forum, OASCF, yesterday said it discovered a major tapping on the trans Ninja pipeline TMP used by oil thieves in Symphony crude from the facility in Boni local government area, River State. The foremost former militant leaders and key stakeholders from the six states of the Niger Delta region met on Saturday at the Palace of the King, Ateke, o Okochiri Kingdom, Okrika, local government area of River State. Now, a source privy to the development said the meeting was convened to discuss ways and strategies needed for overseeing the pipeline surveillance contract with the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, NMPCL. The source, which did not want his name mentioned, said those in attendance also shared the objective of intensifying their efforts to combating illegal refinery, refining, which is affecting the environment. The source also noted that the former warlords expressed commitment to boost collaborative endeavors aimed at safeguarding the pipelines and other critical infrastructure in the area. Now, the source further said the meeting is a collaborative approach with the ability to ensure a turnaround in the ongoing struggle against oil theft with far-reaching benefits for the entire region and the Nigerian economy. Meanwhile, the Ijo Youth uh, Network has commended President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu for renewing the pipeline protection contract awarded to Tantita Security Services Limited for another three years. The IYN coordinator Frank Ebikabo and Secretary Federal Ebiarido said in a statement yesterday that the president displayed uncommon leadership in the pursuit of the collective good of Nigeria. The group said that the decision of the president who ignored a campaign of calumny orchestrated by a group of self-serving individuals was a further vindication of the bold efforts made by the Tantita Security Limited to confront the mindless theft of the nation's oil resources. Now, the IYN said that the renewal of the contract is, uh, spite of the massive campaign against the company, clearly showed that the president is determined to strengthen the fight against the oil thieves who have held down this country's economy for years. The group also commended the group executive chief uh, officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum uh, Company Limited, Mr. Mele Kiari, for the outstanding display of firmness and patriotism in the lingering issue of the fight against oil theft and economic sabotage in the country. Now, OASCF uncovers illegal taps. Now, the OASCF, which uncovered a crude oil theft point at Ogbonga, Oloma community, has called on security agencies to move in to open investigations into the development. All right, Graham Peppel, secretary of OASCF in Bonny Kingdom, who expressed the group's concerns and they discovered the illegal loading point on the Trans Niger uh, Pipeline TMP, a facility belonging to Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC. Peppel said, and I quote, quote, we call on the military, police, civil defense, all relevant securities, high commands to move into investigate the illegal oil loading point cited at Ogbonga Oloma community. End of quote. He continues the quote, quote, the illegal connection I see was found to have been installed for purpose of feeding illegally refineries from the TMP line. We urge the security authorities to carry out proper investigations to ascertain those involved in the installation of the bunkering line. We are surprised that despite robust presence of the Army and Navy households uh, stationed around the said location, loading of illegally refined products via a line illegally connected to the transnational pipeline at Obonga area of Boni Island is still going on. That's the allegation. And I continue. We shall, uh, we recall that the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, uh, over a month ago had said the country lost about $46 billion, uh, which could total about $16.25 trillion or more uh, regarding the exchange rate now to crude oil theft between 2009 and 2020. This was even as a committee of the House uh, uh, summoned the uh, National, Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited 
Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission and Ministry of Petroleum Resources then, among others, for failing to honor its invitation. Now, the speaker who spoke in Abuja while inaugurating the ad hoc committee to investigate crude oil theft and loss of revenue said the menace of crude oil theft has drastically hampered the growth of the country's oil production, with Nigeria losing between 5 and 30 percent of daily crude oil production. He, however, expressed shock that critical agencies in the oil and gas sector had refused to honor the community's invite, adding that the agencies were not doing the nation any good by refusing to appear before the parliament to answer questions on the direct critical aspect of the company. Now, what will be the continuous role of federal government? What will be the role of the oil companies? How will the Petroleum Industry Act impact on federal government, oil companies, and host community relationship? All this we will be trying to dissect on today's edition as we forge further in deepening our democracy and nation building. We'll take a break right now. If you're just tuned in, it's Political Spectrum on Spectrum Television. We'll take a break, then we'll come back for the more robust conversation. Remember, all our channels will be open for your comment and we will reply. Stay tuned, join us again. Every day marks a day of significance. That in view of the apology tendered by this former minister who had earlier been cleared by this August assembly. As we face critical issues, developments and events which shape our social and political landscape here in Nigeria and beyond. Political Spectrum is a program specially designed to help make sense of all the moving parts of developments and occurrences in our nation's polity and political economy. There is nothing wrong with Nigeria, mm. but there is everything wrong. The educational history of public figures holds significance beyond mere biographical details. From executive, legislative, and judicial developments at national and sub-national levels to international diplomacy and relations. Join us for exclusive interviews with key political figures, expert opinions, analysts, thought-provoking conversations for and against, shedding light on the major issues that matter. We will always keep you updated on the most Factual, smartest, and unbiased reportage. Stay tuned to Political Spectrum. Political Spectrum. All sides matter at the round table. Political Spectrum. Exclusive to Spectrum Television.
Spectrum TV. Broadening your horizon. All right, many thanks for staying tuned. If you're just tuned in, it's Political Spectrum on Spectrum Television. All right, uh, to the conversation segment of our show. I have joining me uh, virtually from Abuja, uh, a development uh, consultant and a public affairs analyst, Mr. Jide Ojo. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Shagma. It's a pleasure. How are you today? Very well, sir. Nice to see you again. I like your cap, sir. <laughs> You're always liking my cap. I like you. Mm -hmm. You always have a way of selecting them. <laughs> but you don't, you don't wear cap yourself. I don't know why. Uh, me? Uh, because the set the, demands that I wear this kind of head. <laughs> a cap my crowd, all the things <laughs> I have do. prepared. <laughs> nice to have you. All right, while we'll continue with you, we're also expecting a Reverend Edewo Ogedengbe, who is also a member of civil society and a member of most communities to join us also to make uh, the discussion robust. But I start with you, Mr. Gide Ojo. Welcome uh, once again. Now, let me tickle you a bit. Now, the presidency has not had Federal Executive Council meeting for about going to two months now and only had the second yesterday. Could this portend danger for the state of the nation? What's the implication of that? Okay, so sincerely speaking, I, I think it's, um, it's a worrisome development, but I must also hasten to say that per adventure, the president had his reasons for that. Uh, recall that the inaugural meeting that was held in August, uh, after that inaugural meeting, the president traveled to uh, uh, UN General Assembly in September. And thereafter, I don't know, for another week, he was not around. And one would have thought that if the president is not around, uh, the vice president should be able to take over uh, in acting capacity. But peradventure, because the president did not uh, go on a leave and uh, didn't also go for a long time, like he wasn't away for 21 days that was uh, expected by the Constitution. So the president uh, was still performing his duty uh, from diaspora. We also do know that many of the ministers were meeting with him one on one. Uh, if you watch the news every day, you see a minister coming in from the president's office and addressing the press. Oh, uh, we just had, um, I just spoke with Mr. President. Mr. President just approved. Look at the one week he just did over the weekend. Uh, the creation of the mandate, uh, uh, Women Affairs Mandate Secretary, yeah. and all of that. He, said he got the approval of Mr. President to do that. We've also seen the Minister of Works going in and out, even meeting with the wife of the president uh, to intimate him about the affairs of his ministry. Uh, so in truth, governance hasn't stopped. But you know, given the uh, customary way the Federal Executive Council is supposed to meet, it's supposed to be a weekly meeting. Exactly. But um, the president was away for like 48 days. Uh, the meeting wasn't held for 40 days. So to that extent, it was um, a, a, a slight infraction on the Constitution. However, the other reason I could assert for why the president may not have had another meeting after the inaugural one could be because he wants to have the full complement of the cabinet uh, before he will start. 
Uh, recall that after the inaugural meeting, where the ministers, 45 of them, were sworn in, um, as at that time, there wasn't full complement of the cabinet because we had three uh, outstanding. There was no minister of environment and there was no representative from uh, Kaduna State. There was also no minister for youth uh, and then the minister, minister of state, for, state youth. for youth. So, yeah. so per adventure, the and, and as at that time, it was short after shortly after that August meeting uh, that the National Assembly went on the annual recess for two months. If you if you cast your mind back, yes. So the National Assembly couldn't even confirm the nomination of the three uh, ministers. The one for uh, environment, Balara Bay, uh, Ibrahim, I think, yes. and then the other two that were nominated. So the National Assembly had to come back from recess, I think, last week, and it was only then that, that these three nominees were cleared. So the president may have used uh, the fact that he's here to have a full complement of the cabinet as an alibi for him to tarry. Uh, pending the time that we have full cabinet, and after which uh, the, uh, the will of governance will now move a lot more faster. But Mr. G, but it, that is as, that, that it, is as adding a guess. I'm okay. not a yeah, in as much as president. you may have sounded very logical and articulate, a lot of people argue that the issues facing Nigeria will not require the president to be waiting for two states or three states uh, ministerial representatives to begin a sensitive strategy meeting like the federal executive council meeting and for almost 47 or 48 days or thereabout it has not been held would, would you think that other part of argument is also a logical argument apart from the one you have laid of course it is logical argument and i've looked at the pros and cons i said it is uh, worrisome, it's concerning. But that the reason the president did that may be to enable him, the, to, enable him to have the full complement of uh, the cabinet. But we may not also have the full picture. Perhaps the president may not be in the best state of health. Because I also read uh, some online, uh, online, uh, postulations saying where is Mr. President and uh, throughout last week I don't think anybody saw Mr. President in the open or in the full glare of the camera although people were going in to meet with him they were going in they were coming out but they they I never saw the president at any state function or on camera throughout last week you are very correct perhaps maybe the the President wasn't good and needs to attend to his health. But it's not everything you expose because you know there are frenemies. I think <laughs> I got that phrase in the recent past. There are frenemies. Uh, giving the whole brewer about uh, the president's certificate and uh, the case at the Supreme Court and all the uh, argument back and forth about um, about the uh, the case uh, the election petition case and all of that so the president may just not want to uh, set the country in a panic mood by admitting that he wasn't in the best of health but that is also at the level of a uh, uh, guess i'm not saying the president was sick i saw at least i saw a minister of works going in to meet with the president. I saw a number of governors that said, oh, they just had a meeting with Mr. President, <laughs> and they are just... And like <laughs> I said, the case of Quique, you know, the drastic, the, the drastic uh, uh, revolution that Wiki uh, announced last week when he, yeah. when he met with the press, uh, the fact that there is now mandate secretary, uh, the mandate secretariat, uh, which will enable uh, FCTA workers to now get to level of permanent secretary, as well as having the 
equivalent of Minister of Women Affairs mm. as part of the pillars of governance. He said he has the president's endorsement. So <laughs> it didn't come from the Federal Executive Council. And, and the presidency haven't denied that he never met with the president or that he didn't get the approval of the president to make that announcement. So I would say that invariably the will of governance was still grinding. Uh, the only thing may be that there were no contracts approved. You understand? Because what FEC has become more or less is a, a tenders board yes. that approves contracts. Mm. Uh, so every when, every Monday you hear uh, 1.5 trillion contracts have been approved. This road are to be done. This, that, that, that. So, uh, but I think to the fact that individual ministers was able to assess the president, uh, I think we are not really very, very, very uh, in danger. The country wasn't in danger. Okay. I, I hate to play the devil's advocate here, but uh, <laughs> when you say that you see ministers, you even see some House of Rem Members go in and they come back and they say they have spoken to the president. Recall that in last administration, <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of uh, 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 definitions of the presidency. When they say presidency says, even while Buhari was away for months and was completely incommunicado, presidency still kept saying. But you said something very uh, sensitive also. You said you've not had any approval of contracts. Of course, you can put two and two uh, together. Uh, the FEC meeting says for hopefully will be on Mondays as against the usual Wednesdays in the past administration we hope that they hit the ground running because there are a lot of grounds to cover all right moving forward let's quickly also touch on the issue that is lingering and bringing out all sorts of lawyers and legal pundits and that is the appointment of the fcc chairman uh, we had some tidbits of the conversation yesterday but you know uh, that this kind of issues i always love your opinion about it because you always have your own uh, position which is always very deep and informing but i'd like to ask you now a lot of people have criticized Tinubu's appointment of the efcc chairman as many valid grounds many many different perspective a cognate experience a uh, he has not spent this number of uh, this thing he is a lawyer he's not from law enforcement and all that what will be your own take on the entire issue I know you're not a lawyer, but okay. Okay. So uh, I've granted a couple of interviews on this matter over the weekend. And uh, I just say that I wish Mr. President did not make this controversial appointment. I wish he didn't make this controversial appointment. Because um, even though Lanes Sik and uh, Femi Falano said yesterday that uh, the man had cognitive experience, being a lawyer, and having received training from F FBI, uh, from UK, from this, from that, and uh, that that amounts to cognitive experience. Um, but uh, will you say that cognitive experience was uh, from a law enforcement agency? Can a lawyer transform to being a law enforcement agent? I don't think so. With due respect to learning sick, I think this appointment is too controversial, and the president should have uh, thought it through. Uh, because I recall that I first read this on uh, Premium Times, uh, even before the formal announcement was made. And the conclusion was that this was inappropriate, given Section 2 sub 3 of the EFCC Act, that uh, whoever would be the chairman of EFCC must have uh, experience in law enforcement agency or security agency or its equivalent. And uh, the minimum benchmark was assistant commissioner, commissioner of police. Of police rank. Uh, yes. Assistant commissioner of, of police or its equivalent. Yes. Now, we are presuming and assuming that because Mr. Olukoyede uh, has 22-year post bar, that he has cognitive experience. But the old years he has spent in EFCC has been not more than four years. Two years as chief of staff to Ibrahim Magu exactly. and two years as secretary to the commission. So four years, he was known to be a lawyer in the chambers of 
Professor Yemi Oshinbadu, who happens to be our former vice president. So he was in private law firm. We didn't hear that he has worked with EFCC for 15 years. Take for instance, Lanan Six Fanfalano was talking about uh, Rotimi Jacobs. That Rotimi Jacobs has been an EFCC lawyer since 2004, has assisted the EFCC to prosecute wide range of uh, uh, anti corruption and uh, uh, anti economic crimes law uh, cases. Rotimi Jacobs is as good as being a staff of EFCC. If you have worked with an organization from inception to yeah. date, I'm sure that I will uh, take side that, yes, this man has the cognitive experience. But for somebody who was working in the chambers of the former vice president, and you now, and, and, and there are two sentiments outside of this that I think we also need to bring to fore. Uh, Lana Sik Fenfalano said, oh, the president got it wrong on the basis of uh, appointing two people from the Southwest as uh, uh, head of anti-corruption agency. EFCC and ICPC, I will also yes. say that, and I will also say that the president also had in law by appointing two Christians to be in charge of to uh, anti-corruption agencies. Because Nigeria is a secular state. Professor Balaji Awasoye, who is the uh, chairman of uh, Independent Corrupt Practices and uh, Other Related Offenses Commission, is a Christian and is from Mundo in the Southwest. Uh, Mr. Kayode, uh, I mean, is it Kayode or Olu Kayode? Uh, who is Oluko now Yede. appointed? Oluko Yede. O Oluko Yede. He's from Ekiti State. And he's also a Christian. In fact, it is said that he's a uh, senior pastor in a redeemed church based in Lagos. And given the controversial circumstances, he was relieved of his position with Magu. You want to say, uh, should we uh, be entertaining this kind of controversial uh, nominations? I don't know how Senate will look at this. Uh, perhaps uh, they will do it as paddy paddy, uh, <laughs> we we, because you know when we're having when we're having this discussion about why did the president insist on having Gosula Kwabio as uh, president of the Senate and having Tajuddin Abbas as Speaker House of Reps, many of us postulated that. It is to smoothing and pave way for all these kind of things. So I won't be surprised if Gosra uh, Pablo, as president of the Senate, is able to mobilize his colleagues to give approval. But one thing we must be very careful about. See, Shagun, there is a position of law. There is a position of morality. That's true. We, we are the one that condemned. I was one of those who condemned Buhari, President Muhammadu Buhari, for being provincial and for being clannish. We should not encourage Ashwa Dibola Metinubu to follow the same suit. Look, no, a lot of people will agree with if you. you. Look at, if we look at the economic team of this administration, it's in the hands of the Yoruba. True. Minister of Finance, CBN Governor, FRS Chairman, the Controller General of Customs. We can go on and on. Mr. Ajika, we can go on, on and on and on. Uh, but quickly, sir, let me, I understand that my other guest, uh, Reverend Ede Wogidingbe, has joined us from uh, Asaba. Reverend, good morning to you.
All right, welcome back. And many thanks for staying tuned. I believe we have Comrade Edewa Willingbe back uh, to join us uh, virtually and live from Asaba. Uh, Pastor Edewa, can you hear me now? Hello, Pastor Gedengbe, are you there? Okay, do I still have Mr. Gide Ojo? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so continuing on the conversation while we still battle with uh, connecting him, uh, I just raised the question. I said you had mentioned it, but just for the record, a lot of people have also criticized the president for being a little ethnocentric by his appointments and likened him if positions of government be uh, allocated to only one region of Nigeria. Recall that Nigeria is divided twice, either uh, divided through the north and the south or divided through the six geopolitical zones. But it, uh, it appears, according to critics, that he has been appointing people from only one region of Nigeria. In as much as you have mentioned it in your statement, I want you to speak to it real briefly as we move on. So, for me, um, when I learned, I learned um, as at Sunday, the president has made 123 appointments. And of these 123, we have seen a um, mixed grill. Uh, the president was on short footing with appointment of ministers he had ministers from every state now so okay even though the southeast is saying that they are marginalized given the fact that there has not been any jara as other states have because that on those status two nominee in the federal cabinet uh Auguste had three nominee in the federal cabinet uh Kuala has two and several others like that. Why only the Southeast has only one, 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 a minimum of five. And perhaps uh, if you watch uh, the what uh, Senator Ifan Uba said when he defected to APC, he said the Indibus have made it uh, clear that they also want to belong to the center now and that he is just leading the pack, and that in the coming weeks, there will be many more defections. It tells you the story about the uh, winner-takes-all syndrome of our politics. Nobody wants to stay in Siberia. Everybody wants to move to Saudi Arabia. Where is Siberia? Where is Saudi Arabia? <laughs> Saudi Arabia is a country where resourced as crude oil, as huge resources coming from tourism as people millions of people go on march and siberia is a dry land in the north pole where nobody wants to go because of the very inclement weather so that's the likelihood that's the that's the likelihood but i think mr president needs to watch it um it will be uncharitable to say all sensitive position has been in the southwest he has also considered No, the criticism has been major sensitive positions, just like Buhari was also no. accused. I, I think you no, even mentioned no. some I, of them. You mentioned I, some I, of them. I, I, I ICPC, no, listen. EFCC, CBN, yes, that, that is, you know? Those are, those, are, those are not the only sensitive positions, Shegun. But are I'm they not major? Saying, it's not me no, who's criticizing. I'm just saying these are the criticisms. I'm just yes. bringing it to the fore. I'm saying, uh, and I'm saying that, yes, when you say economic powerhouse as an under to the Yorubas, I agree. But likewise, if you look at the security sector, it has been handed over to the north. Okay, I quite agree it with is, you because yet again, the majority of our security challenges, you know, and issues bordering on security are uh, a core northern issue i'm not saying there are no issues of insecurity in other uh, regions of nigeria so i quite agree with you but mr dj please let's see whether we can quickly bring in pastor Ogedengbe. pastor Ogedengbe, good morning to you once again good morning, good morning. nice to have you <laughs> it's my you pleasure know, you know glitches 
glitches has become a part of our vocabulary and dictionary. So sorry that yeah. we had some glitches, but it's nice to finally mm -hmm. have you. We've been having uh, conversations back and forth uh, on, I, I wanted to uh, pick some of your opinion too on the issue of the appointment of the EFCC, the current EFCC chairman. You know, we've had all sorts of pundits say that cognate experience is not enough, that he has not, the president has not abided by uh, the uh, EFCC Act as it is written. You know, while some lawyers have also come to say uh, that technically he is qualified and, you know, they subject it to all the letters and spirit of the law. I'm not a lawyer. I know you're not a lawyer. But let's have your rich and informed opinion on that before we move on. Thank you for having me. Apologies for those glitches from my end also Welcome. that uh, kept me, you know, on the way thing. Welcome. Yes, on the subject matter you've just raised, my first um, reaction would be the fact that all along since the establishment of EFCC and other security uh, uh, agencies, as the case may be, appointments to the headship of those agencies have always, you know, uh, occasioned with, you know, reactions, actions here and there. Exactly. So the Oluka Ede appointment is not new in terms of the reactions we are getting now. But I'm more worried about, you know, some of the conversation that usually follow, you know, post appointment and the, you know, appointment of people to public offices. I'm more concerned about that. Now, what I think we should be concerned with, more importantly, is the character of the person that is coming in. The character of the person, his pedigree, from Ribadu to the last Mabawa that you know just left now. Yes. Every of the UFCC headman appointment has always been criticized here and there. Exactly. The, the, yes. Well, so what you now find out is when these people, after criticism, are they also left to man those offices? What were their performance? What were their performance? So that's why I am very concerned about the character of the people that we trust in public offices. What antecedents when they came in there? And when they came in there, do they deviate from those antecedents that they were known to be? I think we should be preoccupied with that more than the sentiment of, oh, it's from here, it's from there. Why I'm not also not, I'm not mindful of the federal character principle that you balance, you know, not and the South equation. I'm not really against that at all. That, that sensibility should be, you know, given attention. Yes. But for me, People come to criticize for reasons best known to them. Majority of the criticisms and, you know, the thumbs up and the thumbs down are usually fueled by different sentiments. So to that extent, I'm not really carried away when people come, bundle criticism, try to talk down people, try to talk up people. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm, I'm not uh, in that, that bandwagon. Rather, I want to stay with the, the patriotism that we should you know, how as citizens of this country, let's look at the objective, more objective in addressing issues rather than being sentimental and, of course, bringing to bear, oh, primordial sentiments that will, you know, outweigh the objectivity that to follow what is ongoing. So for me, if Mr. President I had the prerogative to so appoint an EFCC uh, chairman, as nominated uh, Lou Coyote, then let him go through the scrutiny of the Senate that will have the right to screen and possibly confirm. Then if they find him worthy, yes, let him go there and serve Nigeria and also make Mr. President proud for choosing him in the first place to do that. But anything outside that, for me, it becomes politics and partisanship okay. that has okay. not taken okay. a to work. Okay, but Reverend, still following this, your line of argument, they say uh laws are made for man man is not made for law now if you look yeah. at the the entire conversation concerning national interest the federal character commission was established for a reason should yes. nigeria not be looking at the issues concerning balancing every stakeholder, whether ethnic, whether religious, whatever sector is divided, should the nation not be looking at that as a priority rather than all of us, you know, still seeking to, it must be competence, it must be competence, someone comes from the not all the time because he's competent. Should 
the national conversation not be towards the fact that to sustain our unity, Nigeria has never been so divided along religious and ethnic lines. Should the issue of the federal character, uh, federal character, should it not be at the front burner in terms of balancing every stakeholder, sir? Absolutely. It should be because that is the, 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 the fulcrum. That is the knot that binds us together as a united Nigeria. So that must be given its pride of place. However, that I believe also that in every part of this country, we have eminently qualified Nigerians that can fit into any political, any appointive office. That's so correct. So we are saying that, yes, so nepotism must give way in the running of affairs of this country, either at the national, at the subnational, and even at the local level. Why we must stand on the unity? It is only united that we stand. So we must be sure that, look, at every point of appointing people to office, the federal character principle must be adhered to completely. Anything outside that we meet with, you know, on the level of criticisms that may even, you know, leave more than desire. So I am clearly with everyone that is standing on the part of the federal character principle that should be respected. I stand on that. But that should come with also competence and, of course, the character that believe in the Nigerian factor. You know, all, over, over the years, especially with this unbroken democracy that has come from 1999 to date, successive administration come with the same statement and the outcome has left us more worrisome than ever. Mm. So I am concerned, which is why I am situating my conversation on the point of character, you know, Running with the laws of the as controversial as many of them, many may put them that oh, the laws are not really for us. And so if we are able to also engage the laws to the best of our ability with the right mindset, I think the laws can also take us from where we are now to where we should be. That's my take. So I support the federal. I agree with you totally, Pastor. I agree with you to totally. Still staying with you. Uh, let's change this to another development. Now, because I know you are from the Niger Delta oil rich region and your opinion will also matter. Now, ex militant warlords, or so they describe them, have gathered to forge way forward on the issue of oil theft. We know the stories back and forth about massive oil theft. Now, commending a renewal of the pipeline protection contract to Tanita Security Services, even the Joy Youth Nation have commended the President Tinubu for renewing this same contract. Now, the question is, who, according to all the interviews by Tom Polo and a lot of all the uh, people who are part of the stakeholders for the security, who could be the oil thieves stealing massively from our nation? It's a rhetorical question, but people are watching. Mm. They need to be educated. Pastor Ogidengbe. Well, thank you very much. For me, I must commend the president for renewing that contract to Tantita Security. Obviously and honestly speaking, that company has done so much good to, you know, the oil pipeline uh, uh, protection within the time he came on stream. You, that was only when you could see that, yes, we saw the connivance of our security agencies and, of course, indigents and settlers within who take on due advantage on the porosity of our, our security system, with due respect, now that people who are supposed to be protecting you know the national assets are in connivance with some locals who will be diverting all of that it is a coming of Tantita security that made us to see that open glare you know a, a, a compromise that we've seen so renewing such you know such contract is a welcome development it's a thumb up for you know uh, uh, mr president for renew the contract and i will also say further that largely speaking People from the Niger Delta are culpable here. I'm saying this because I'm a Niger Delta, and I stand to be corrected. They are culpable because there's a lot of sit down look. Sit down look, I mean, you see wrong things happening in your domain because either you benefit subtly or directly or indirectly, so you keep deaf ears to such things. And at the end of the day, I've always said that a bad situation you do nothing about will get worse. Today, we've come to see that what 
Nigeria is even producing uh, the crew that we, produce, we, we, we we get daily. We don't even have account of it. There is no clear account of the number of crews that we we, we, we we produce daily. We don't know it up to this time. With all of the technology that have come and other claims that also have oil that we do, we don't borrow those credible things from them. Rather, we are very good mm. at always sabotaging the, the national, you know, national, you know, uh, uh, assets. So it's a call for worry. I am saying that look beyond renewal of the security to Tantita uh, Security Limited, there should be more, you know, more conscientization, more conscientization within the people of the Niger Delta, and not just that the security agencies that have the primary responsibility of, you know, securing the asset of this country. They should not be seen near uh, where they are fingered here and there. If any such one is fingered, there should be open shaming of such characters and not the defending this kind of things that make people to want to go into such uh, adventure that is unprofitable for the country. So as a Niger Delta, I thumb up for Mr. President for renewing that contract. And also, it's another clarion call for the Tantita Security Management to double their effort and cash all the tips around, whether <laughs> they are locals or external forces that are taking undue advantage of the porosity of the system. That's my take. Reverend, I like the way you put it. Let me now come to Mr. G.D. Ojo. Do you agree, first of all? Because there are other you know, people arguing that rather than give private contracts to private citizens... You, you, are, you are denigrating the reputation of the Navy and our, you know, uh, the, the, the military arm that is responsible for marine affairs and all the Nigerian Navy and all that. What, Mr. Ojidi Ojo, I want you to react to this. Do you agree uh, that uh, uh, Tinubu should be commended, you know, for rewarding Tantita uh, uh, security agencies, the pipeline contracts when... Uh, you know, the naval officers are supposed to be in charge. So, I, I, I take a different view. And Let's hear it. What, what, has happened, what has happened is a failure of Nigerian state. Hmm. It's a failure of Nigerian state. Because it's like saying, okay, to solve the problem of banditry in the north, uh, you just go for one emir and give him billions and tell him to provide security for all the states, 19 states in northern Nigeria. When the Nigerian army is there, the Nigerian Air Force is there, the Nigerian Navy is there. It, 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 you see, we started something we may, that may end up, uh, you know, haunting us. So now, uh, Tantita got 47 billion renewal for three years. Yes. Please, Chegu, which one will you do? Can you do that you earn 47 billion in three years? Maybe maybe when this, I get a pipeline this, contract. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. On a light this, mood. This, uh, this, this, this um, former militants are now dictating the terms and conditions for the state. Mm. Uh, and I, I saw immediately the, the week that the president Tinubu was going to be inaugurated. Tantita Security and, uh, and, and uh, you know, Tompolo started taking a uh, front page advertoria on major newspapers, wrap around security, doing congratulatory messages and all of that. This man has weapon that is the envy of Nigerian Navy. Only one company, one individual, has weapon that even Nigerian Navy may not have. And we think we are dealing with a situation that will not spill out of control. Now, the other groups that met in the, at the palace of uh, uh, His Royal Highness, Tom Ateke, over the weekend, what what are they doing? They are also asking for a share of the cake. Okay, but but, look, but Mr. Jide, while I while I while I stay with you, Mr. Jide, a lot of people will argue that that move is using one stone to kill two birds. First, 
is quenching the unrest in the Niger Delta by involving those people who are the major agitators. Then second, like they say, is putting someone who probably may have potential to decimate or destroy these facilities to now watch it. Don't you see that that argument may be also logical? Because Pastor Gedebe has just said that he also joins the Joy Youth Nation and other stakeholders to commend the renewal of the contract. Yes, go on. I'm with you. It's not logical. Okay, how so? When you take... See, what, what Tantita is supposed to do is to protect the pipelines. If other boys that are put out of work protecting the pipelines start abducting people and demanding for ransom in millions of dollars, would they send Tantita to also start helping to rescue the abductees? We need to be very careful. Since 2009, Nigerian state has been investing heavily in Niger Delta region. They have invested trillions. Look, we have 13% derivation. We have Ministry of Niger Delta. We have Niger Delta Development Commission. That's correct. We have uh, uh, all of this. Which other one? We have government at each of the six Niger Delta states. Yes. The, the what so they Padek, the so what, and the rest. What yes. are they doing? What are they doing to improve the living standard of the people of Niger Delta? Mm. This 47 billion will go to private hands. At what at best, maybe uh Tantita or at uh take it on, we 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 employ one thousand Niger Delta youths. But does he have control of what happens in Aquaibo? Does he have control of what happens in rivers? Remember. Uh, uh, Asari Dokubo told him, look, oh, first Delta, oh, that's where you are from. Take care of Delta. Don't come and be saying you are policing anything <laughs> in my backyard there. In, but in, uh, in, but uh, they, seem, they seem so, to be, <laughs> Mr. Ajide, they be but, but they seem to be in one accord now because if, we've, if there's been differences, the major newspaper headlines and major mainstream new, uh, media, including ours, would have carried... Uh, such reports. But let me quickly come to my uh, Reverend, uh, 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 Reverend Ogedengbe. Do you agree with this perspective of argument? Because before then, you commended the renewal of the contract, uh, Pastor Ogedengbe. How do you see yeah. this argument? What's your own take? Well, I, I totally disagree with the argument. Okay, how so? You know, <laughs> ranging from the fact that you see, when there is there is this adage I want to begin with from the aged that when there is a snake in a building in a house, who killed the snake does not matter, provided that the snake does not escape. <laughs> so now we are grappling with oil theft for years, and we have the Nigerian securities there collecting their monthly subscription uh, royalty, they have been there. But the government of President Tinubu decided to, I mean, uh, Buhari then decided to say, okay, let me go now try something new by giving a private security contract to monitoring the pipelines and see what becomes of it. And this was done. Who I think Good Luck also did that said. before Buhari. Okay, so I'm even speaking to the Tantita now directly. Okay. okay. Now, it, it came on stream. And we began, we began to see even a private security, you know, having a head-on collision with Nigerian Navy in the waters on the propriety of, oh, this is a stolen crude vessel. We saw them. So I am speaking to the reality of the times, not rhetoric now. Okay. As a Niger Delta, we know that there is serious connivance between, you know, state actors and non-state actors. So we must not be oblivious of that fact. And having established that, what do we do to quell that? If it is by bringing a private person who understands the terrain, because one of the arguments, some of the militaries at different points have also put up is that the terrain, the uniqueness of the terrain, and the non -familiarity, familiarity, you know, familiarization of the terrain by these operators. Now you have people, residents from the area that understood the terrain, and they know how far they can go. 
to monitor these pipelines and deny those people who take or do advantage of you know the terrain to unflesh you know mayhem on this instrument so to my mind i just believe that we should not be complacent we should be open minded and of course sentiment should be out of the way what we, we we've seen from the records that our oil theft has reduced since the coming of this private security complementing the nigerian military as the case may be in this case here now and of course that has also helped our our revenue generation so if that is a thing that can be sustained but you can argue that yes in doing this there should be some level of you know checks and balances so that it does not you know uh, uh, outlive its usefulness i will agree with that argument that school of thought but to say that oh because we have regular security agencies that you handle and why bring a private security so what's their function that's a question that we should pose to the security agencies. Why have they not been able to man the, 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 the this uh, you know government assets all along? That suddenly we begin to bring a new private a private person, and we are beginning to see caches here and there that you can speak to. So, to my mind, it should be encouraged. But I okay. will also be quick to submit that yes, in encouraging it, best practice must be brought to bear. That where they need to be some restraint, they should be admo you know admonished to so follow, and so that it doesn't look as if oh All because right. you are doing this you are now you know dovetailing to areas that you shouldn't dovetail to. All I, right, I, I, I submit. All right, all right, uh, Mr. G Mr. Ajide, back to you. Uh, you know, if we continue this argument, <laughs> time will not be enough, and we're trying to wrap up now. You've seen videos surface of uh, uh, Tom Polo saying categorically that you get to some areas of the Niger Delta and then you see gunboats belonging to the Navy guarding that area. You see gunboats belonging to maybe another uh, paraphernalia of the military. And you now look at a particular point not too far from there and then you see massive oil theft in major vessels being taken away. Ordinarily, logically, if people had heard that, people would say, okay, this may not necessarily be, you know, the Niger Delta militants. There could be a hand of government in this. Putting that in view, I want you to use it to buttress the point you've been trying to make about this oil theft and the private security outfit from your own perspective as we wrap up, because we have barely two or three minutes to end the show. Mr. Ojo, Mr. Ajide Ojo, please go on. So, so, so my, my own take is this. We need to be careful of the monster we are trying to create. For the past uh, 2009 to date, there have been amnesty program. I tell you for free. Yes, the security may be providing cover for those who are stealing the crude oil. And there are a handful of them. And they can be fished out and dealt with. You remember before Tompolo made those assertions, even um, uh, Governor Yeson Wike, when he was still the governor of River State, I came out and mentioned names of some uh, security agents that are providing cover, including members of Nigeria Police, the Civil Defense, and others that were providing cover for illegal oil bunkering. It is for the state to act. The lethargy with which we are handling the issue of insecurity should be over and done with. Let me cite this example to you. Remember Wagner Group? Who was who was the Wagner Group that was killed recently? Pre uh, in the plane crash. Yes, the head. Pregos you know, it's a, it was a creation of who? Of the same Russian the military. Of Putin. Putin. Of Putin. He was said to be a Putin's chef. But when push comes to show, they got him to come and fight the Ukrainians. He said they didn't give him enough ammunition. And he gave the, the state days within which to meet his demands. Otherwise, they would leave the battlefield. Long story short, privacy turned against Putin, who made him who he was. And <laughs> even wanted people, to match... People will say he turned on, against on, the military on, hierarchy. <laughs> Mr. Jide, people, well, people. well, you may say military anarchy, but if not for the Belarusian president, 
that persuaded him to turn back. He could have overthrown Vladimir Putin. So we need to be very careful. When you when you give this multi-billionaire contract, these guys will go and acquire gunboats, sophisticated weapons. The day you tell them that you are no longer renewing this contract, what would they use those guns and ammunition to do. for? Okay. They will use it to, 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 to do the... the That's a beautiful so place to, to end it, Mr. Gd. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. We've been speaking to... Mr. Jide Ojo, a development consultant, uh, an author, a columnist in the, uh, national newspapers and the public affairs analyst. It's always nice to have you, Mr. Jide. And I was serious when I said I like your cap. Yes, we've also had the privilege you, of you, Pastor Ogedengbe Edewo, a dogged member of civil society, uh, an uh, interventionist. You, you know your CV is very long, uh, <laughs> Pastor Ogedengbe. This is your first time on the show, and we want to appreciate you too. You know, time is never enough for us to exhaust these issues as they come. Uh, thank you so much. We hope that next time when we call you, you will be free enough to join us, Pastor Guinigbe. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that's been all we can take on the show. We have to run now because the next program is ready and waiting. Remember, our conversations continue on all our social media platforms. Recall that on our website, www.spectrumtvlive.ng, you can have a live stream of this program and many other programs and also on Spectrum Television on YouTube. Uh, we'll see you on the next edition. I remain yours sincerely on when I say Ehinoma Olu saying have a lovely day. See you tomorrow.